Okay, perfect. Um, this is probably going to take like a half hour, maybe 35 minutes, so not even that long. All right. Three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of Mental Health Monday here. My boy, Bray. Welcome back, man. Good to be back, brother. Oh, of course, of course. You return, man. That was quick. Yeah. So, Total Truth Thursday. How do you feel? I'm feeling really um, empowered from that experience, man. Um, you know, that experience of getting brothers together to talk about what vulnerability is, yeah. to do some yoga, to do some breath work together. Uh, when I talked about it, I remember saying that it came from a need. Um, as a yogi, as a healer, generally the spaces I operate in have a lot of women in, which is great, and women need to do that work too. Yeah. But sometimes I don't see people that look like me in those spaces, and um, it was powerful for me to be able to connect with brothers at that level. Yeah. What about you? Um, the brothers are starving. Mm -hmm. The brothers, the brothers are starving for a vulnerable space. Uh, the brothers are starving for someone to take the lead and answer their question of. How do we get to that place? Yeah. Um, in the sit down portion, especially in the sit down portion, which was the second half that we did after you set the room and the energy and the intention with the yoga and the breath work that you did, I realized that not only is there a lot of pain, there's a lot of just acceptance of this is how things are going to be. And there's no up or down, just this is what life is. Yeah. And I realized then I had a lot to give. But my, my experience comes from pain. My experience comes from like really living it. And my experience comes from the practice of the advice that I've given out that has gotten me this far. Mm. Because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really in the belief that no matter how much money you have, money can take care of things. Don't get me wrong, but you do still need to be in a position to enjoy the success, the money, the attention, and the relationships that you garner from the things that you do or the things that you lose. Mm -hmm. Both those sides are important. Um, most folks would say, well, I pictured it being this way, it didn't line up, so, you know, I don't want it. And it's like, yeah, but those are the cards that you're dealt. And in a lot of the conversations we had, especially when it came to um, picking people out, going around the room and hearing A, how everyone was doing to start it off. I love how you did that, by the way. No, nah, thank yeah. you, I appreciate that. And then the reason I do it that way is because I believe like, hey, there's a difference between you doing a speaking engagement where you're just speaking to the crowd and everybody simply learns from your experience. And that's why I say things like, when it was time for us to do the speaking portion, I'd rather sit down and meet them where they are. I love that. You yeah. get what I'm saying? I'd rather give them a moment to say their piece or have me understand why are they there today and if we could put five to 10 minutes to whatever point they brought up or the perspective they may not have, it'll either help the person that I'm talking to or someone in the room who says, I even never thought of it that way. Or you know what? You've added to a place that I'm already standing and you added to the picture. Mm -hmm. Cause I was, uh, I think one of the points I said is look, no matter how big the picture is or now, no matter how much you think you have a grasp on the total outcome or perspective, that little conversation that you have with the person next to you changes everything. I love how you asked a simple question, what is vulnerability mm -hmm. to each person? And it's such a breadth of language like in perspective mm -hmm. that came from each individual that just yeah. spurred into so many different conversations. Mm -hmm. And I love the way that you say that people were starving. Those brothers were starving to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. I've been in so many spaces where men uh, make themselves small when it comes to emotional expression and uh, this space for men to do that mm -hmm. was dope because brothers really got to let themselves go. Yeah. Um, also, we're starving too. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? It's not like we, anyone could look up what vulnerability is, right? But not many people could listen to the definition of vulnerable vulnerability from how many people were there? I'd say about 20 folks all together was there in the yeah. entire room. And each person had a different definition of vulnerability and a perspective on why that was their definition of vulnerability. And what I noticed was a lot of folks, men who came to the event that we did, they defined vulnerability by whether they were okay or not. Mm -hmm. So half the answers were 
vulnerability is this because it makes me be able to be okay but not a lot of answers actually directly answered what vulnerability was for them it always came from the place of well i found this is what vulnerability was because when i was in this position this is how people approached me there was one person in particular who said vulnerability is being able to forgive myself for stuff because i i'm not able to forgive myself for particular things there was another person who said they broke down and they let us know about, you know, how important travel was and that that was taken away from them. And that this part of their life coming out of the pandemic has been about getting back to that travel and that space and needing like time away from things. And I was just like, oh, this is a large subject. Yeah. And even like for us, when we started it with what vulnerability looked like, I told the story of realizing someone came to me with something important and I didn't have that. That was, that was my vulnerability moment. My vulnerability moment was looking at what someone had and what they had unknowingly given to me and me realizing I didn't have that in any part of my life. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? And even for you, you know, if you wanted to share what your part was, like, you know, in few words, but like, not only was each person's definition different, but I could see, I could see a little glimpse of how they got to where they are and what is necessary. For me, um, a little bit of my part was that vulnerability mm -hmm. comes from a place of courage. Yeah. Um, having the courage to one, be self-aware of what you're going through. That's the, I think a big component of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Also having the courage to express it. Yeah. Um, and I asked the question, for a brother who maybe expressed himself one time, mm -hmm. chose to be vulnerable, and wherever that source or wherever that energy he sent it towards, he didn't feel like it was well received, and now the brother's closed his heart off to the world. Mm -hmm. And we asked a group, what would you say to a brother like that who was in that process of healing? And uh, I think the answers from the room were really powerful. And just one brother in the room named David, mm -hmm. he's a breath coach. Yeah. He was like, vulnerability is getting broken down and putting yourself back out there again. Over and, and over, then over and over, and over again. again. Mm -hmm. And one other brother said, you know, a heart can't open unless it was broken once. Yeah. And that was powerful, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's so many brothers out here who who, when they have expressed themselves, the world said it's too aggressive or uh, you, you're talking too much, or it, it, it can be anyways. It, it can be so many different ways um, that we have expressed vulnerability mm -hmm. and we didn't feel safe when we did it. And now we're like, F it. I don't want to talk to nobody. Yeah. Yeah. And those, those are valid experiences. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Um, in the talk that we had, I'm very, no one is right or wrong in that discussion. All I wanted to know is what have you experienced? What is your point of view? And what's the advice you need for where you are? Mm -hmm. Cause like, if we're all running the same marathon, our steps aren't the same. Everyone's muscle condition isn't the same. Everyone's breath work is the same. We're all working with different coaches. Yeah. We all have separate goals and we just happen to be running on the same path and hopefully there's no rocks that make any of us twist our ankles as we're trying to find what, when a good stride feels like. I think it's very rare for people to understand, to work to the point that they find what their stride is. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I think that's a really important uh, aspect of looking at it. Mm -hmm. Going back to the yoga piece, you know, for me, just really to you, a lot of the work I do on the healing community, a lot of these events that I put together come from a place of trauma. Mm -hmm. um, wellness has started from a place of trauma for me, uh, having mental breakdowns and figuring out mechanisms, mechanisms, modalities, mm -hmm. as you would describe, uh, maintenance tools yeah. to address myself. Yeah. And there are so many different ways of doing it. And yoga was one that spoke to me. Mm -hmm. The intentional movement, the breath work, the directing of the mind. Um, also, you know, diving into the concept of grit. You know, David Goggins, this Navy SEAL, um, uh, has this philosophy of just diving into friction. Yeah. Um, really helped me overcome these self-limiting beliefs. And that's what worked for me. That was my personal narrative. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's gotten you here. And it's gotten me here. Yeah, but that may not work, work for everybody. Yeah. yeah. And not for everybody, and it may not work forever. Yeah. Right? What are, <laughs> and so being flexible when it comes to self-growth mm -hmm. has been very crucial 
in my journey. Yeah. Um, what would you say about that in your own? Um, what I'd say is, so right now I'm on a body journey, mm -hmm. right? Um, from the pro tryouts that I did um, back in the day from 2012, 2011, 2012 to about 2017, they've taken a toll on my body, mm -hmm. right? And <clears throat> a lot of people admire me for the amount of strength and grit that I I have and I'm willing to put into how I've built my body, my spirit and my focus. But once you're done being strong, there's very few people who are there for the process of, I need to rebuild my body. Yeah. When uh, 2020 happened, I purposely decided I'm not going to lift or work out anymore. Mm -hmm. I said, you've been... I was fat as a little kid, like third grade forward. You were always put in all these programs to lose weight. You finally figured out how to become strong from high school to college. You finally figured out how to become an, a, an explosive athlete, even when you had a stressed Achilles, but you've torn tendons, you've stressed Achilles, which is still stressed to this day. You've pulled muscles within your shoulders. You've had cracked ribs. You've had a torn meniscus. You've had pull tendons within other parts of your thigh and groin. When are you going to get the proper tools th that help you be able to become strong without being in pain? Mm -hmm. So most of us think in order to become strong, you have to pay the price of pain. But after paying that price, many of us don't think how do we get the proper tools to give myself the body I deserve and to get back on the path of enjoying that chase and that inertia of getting the strength and the fortitude that we need and it not be a double-edged sword as we get there. Mm. And that's what maintenance looks like for me right now. Like doing the research, finding the right people that have the videos that said, Hey, this person had, a stressed shoulder, this person had a bad back or this person couldn't do a deadlift without feeling sharp pain in their left quad. Do you relate to this story? This is what we did for them. You may need to incorporate that in your program. And the reason that's important is because <clears throat> a lot of the young men that made space to attend our event and do the sit down with us, that's how I view what they're going through. That's why last night, uh, this morning, six in the morning, I shot the first video for day one of vulnerability. And what I'm doing is I'm defining the three forms of vulnerability that us men are going to come across or have come across because I want us to practice everyone who attended the event. I want us to practice putting what we're feeling in words or having a word that represents that scenario and then working from there. Hmm. You got what I'm saying? Once you Put it into words. Once this word has a meaning, once you can look the word up without my help, that gives you one more tool to frame what you're going through. And usually when you have the frame of what you're going through, you're able to work. Okay. Who was I in the frame of things? Yeah. How did I get there in the frame of things? I love was it. there someone else that triggered where I am in the frame of things? Am I putting myself in these positions continuously? Or are these people putting me in these positions and I'm not doing a great job of instilling my boundaries? Like Maul said, when it came to like cutting somebody off, instilling boundaries and understanding that boundary protects the happiness and the realness of who he is. And then that allows you to go forward, enjoying what life needs to be for you in terms of what you may or may not have. So at a simple mechanistic level, what we're doing here, I feel like my goal for this, 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 this experience for man, total truth Thursday was for us to walk away with tools yeah. for tools of self-awareness mm -hmm. and for literally a language of vulnerability that gives a conceptual understanding of the world so that we can optimize our lived experience mm -hmm. um, based on where we are at in our lives. Yeah. We're all at different places, all at different starting points. Um, taking advantage of those maintenance tools and those maintenance tools can be breathing. It can be exercise. Um, it can be meditation. It can also be conversation with another brother. Um, and so, yeah, I think at a global level, this is something the community needs. Mm -hmm. Um, this is something the community is making space for. Yeah. Yeah. And taking the time to do. And what I noticed is 
uh, after we put up the video, I had people in my DMs who said, hey, whenever the next one happens, please let me know. Likewise, I got people texting me right now, mm -hmm. like, bro, when the next one? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'd like to be a part of that discussion. Um, how can I contribute to what you guys are doing? I have a lot of folks who are like, this is necessary, or uh, dudes out in LA who uh, do photography for like Larry June and a couple other folks. And their words verbatim, two sentences, this is so necessary. The work you're doing is so powerful. Thank you. Yeah. And it's, to me, it's, it's a moment of pride and being proud, but it's also sad that a lot of us watch other people do it or watch other people receive it. And we don't put ourselves in that positions of where can I find this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or if I Google this, there's probably not enough people doing it in the format that we're doing that feels their need. Yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, the packaging matters. Like when we're there, we are very honest about our experience. We're very honest about other people's experiences. And if anybody else is laughing when it's happening, we're not laughing at the person. We're laughing at the situation because we've been there before and we relate. There's two things I want to say. One, mm -hmm. speaking on the fact that the similar sense of pride that people are reaching out, but yeah. also proud to see women are reaching out like, bro, I see what you're doing. Brett, I'm so proud of you. Juice, I'm so proud. Women mm -hmm. want to see this in the community um, as well. And I'm happy to see that because this whole divide between man and woman mm -hmm. on social media, especially black man and black woman on social media, yeah. it's really disheartening. Yeah. And so uh, I think you know, that's that's encouraging to see that women are so supportive of men doing that self-care. Yeah. Um, Kendrick likes to say, you know, who the fuck praying for me mm -hmm. um, on the other side? Because I feel like so much of our men in the world um, are only valued, and we can correct me if I'm wrong, if they produce. Um, and um, that was, you know, that's, a, that's, a, that's a deep conversation. <laughs> that was actually one of the points I brought up and the very first point that I teach you guys that's coming out probably later tonight at around 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, and when when you're in a relationship or you live with someone <clears throat> of the opposite sex when someone breaks into your house it is it immediately falls on the man to have to defend and protect the family so who protects the man mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying and when it comes to our sense of vulnerability men define vulnerability by what are we not able to do yeah and the thing that we're not able to do we don't feel the need to have to be vulnerable because we have all these things that we have to be. And to us, vulnerability, if we do become vulnerable, that is a sign of weak. That's a sign mm -hmm. that we're not enough. And even outside of the people telling us these things, sometimes we internalize that and we use that to fuel ourselves, And we start to say things like, well, I don't want to be this. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be this. And those things harden us. And later in life, when we do need to be vulnerable or we do need to learn these tools, it's why would I need that tool that I told myself for the last 20, 25, 30 years, that thing would make me weak if I ever became that. Mm -hmm. And that's what unbuilding and the spaces that we're making in vulnerability is now becoming because like, there's nothing wrong with masculinity. And when toxic masculinity comes into the picture, I usually think, well, where does this derive from? Where is this need to have to be this perfect thing? Where is this need to have to be this dominant figure in the story of when things went wrong, the man stood 10 toes down mm -hmm. and it's like, I, right, well, you may need to start practicing standing 10 toes down for yourself in a very different capacity that you do need, whether you realize that or not. That's very interesting. Going back to this conversation, how I think social media, social media has really diluted mm -hmm. uh, positive relationships between genders. You know, it's this whole, you hear I hear this term now, it's a sassy nigga season. Yeah, you know, when, I, when, I, when I heard the it's a sassy nigga season, I, that was probably the It was least, triggering for me. That was the I'm least, an emotional dude. That was the least self-love thing I could have heard someone say because it's like, you folks, and that's how I usually refer to the people that say that you were complaining that men aren't soft enough mm -hmm. as a group. Cause I, I view it as a group project. You were complaining that they're not opening up to you. Well, what you're referring to as a sassy nigga season, that is a part of the man's process of opening up if you want to meet them there. And if you don't want to meet them there, then that man probably shouldn't make space for you in his life. Because what that says is, 
you are going to be the dangerous person that assumes this person's care if it's not framed in a way that serves you then it shouldn't be there at all that's interesting man um you know this is a larger conversation but yeah i, I consider myself a fairly emotionally intelligent brother mm -hmm. and in my relationships i am um you know I'm heterosexual. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes my emotions, even though women claim they want a man who is emotionally available, mm -hmm. when my emotions don't meet, reach their expectations or in a framework in which they want, mm -hmm. then they use it against me, right? Yeah. Um, and that's unfortunate. It um, is. Yeah, and that's just unfortunate in a lot of cases. And that's what I was talking about. You know, what are some brothers who have expressed vulnerability mm -hmm. who know that language and then they were with somebody because a lot of women don't, generally, sometimes a lot of women never has had a man who is emotionally intelligent. And so once they get that, they don't even know how to deal with. <laughs> but <laughs> and, I, but could, uh, I could give you the other side of that, Corey. Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, my past relationship, I was dating a highly intelligent, emotionally intelligent person. I was not ready for that. Mm -hmm. I, when I tell you uh, every opportunity I can, I want it to be as manipulative as possible. Mm. Cause like when you can't handle something or you don't have the right tools or mindset to share that space that the person brings you into when they're emotionally intelligent, you usually feel like, well, I need to do something to balance things out because what they have, I've never experienced before. And I don't know if I'm willing to learn that. Mm -hmm. So I also became aware that, oh, I'm actually an extremely manipulative person if I don't fit in or I don't feel things are going my way. And I didn't recognize, oh, I'm taking the steps towards manipulating the situation because I don't feel that I'm on equal ground with this person. And did you realize that in real time or are these things that you realized after the breakdown? Uh, this real, I realized that a couple of years into the whole situation. Okay. Years into the situation. Years. So that means yeah. that person repetitively saw me make the same mistakes in different ways. And then I realized in a certain capacity within that relationship, I was a part of the problem. Yeah. And in realizing that I, I was like, oh, I have to do better. Yeah but I didn't want better for myself or realize that I wanted better for myself. I wanted better because I realized the person who was with me and talking to me and trying to teach me the ways of what emotional intelligence looks like back in that day, they actually had me in mind and they had, they wanted better for me. And when I realized this person wanted better for me, I started questioning, why don't I want better for myself? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to women like that or that group of people that, oh, it's sad, it's the saddest thing they season, I usually, in my head, and it's usually right from my experience, they don't know that they want better for themselves or they don't see that person as better for themselves because what they feel, they feel that their role in a relationship with that kind of person is erased because for them, they're like, no, I do the self-care things. I take care of myself. I get my nails done. I get the massages. My girls and I, we know how to relax. You should be the man. You should be gardening. You should be building houses. Mm -hmm. You should be fixing cars. You should be making money. And I make money too, but we spend more of your money than I can figure out what I have to do. So with folks like that, I think the worst thing you could do is take whatever they have to say personally because... A, they haven't gotten there yet. And B, you now, actually, you should be glad that they're saying that out loud because you have the idea of who you don't want in your life All right. or who to avoid. Right. Like, just because I'm a good person doesn't mean every time I see someone doing wrong, I'm going to help them. Uh -huh. But no matter what, unless I protect myself and I put myself in the right position and I have the right people around me, right now, which are my boundaries and a form of my boundaries, yeah. I won't have to deal with that headache in person. And if that person just acts as such to fit in and I come across it and I realize, oh, this is the core of who they are, it ain't nothing to cut that off. That's a great conversation I want to have next time with yes. Yeah. What do, what do healthy, what boundaries that you have set in your life are you mm -hmm. proud of? Yeah. When it and comes then, to yourself mm -hmm. and with other people. Yeah. I feel like so many men, we don't value ourselves. We ready you know, to throw ourselves at any women or person that gives us attention and yeah. we just let them walk over us. And um, we yeah. really are glad to just have attention sometimes. Yeah. We don't, and just, just as visible. people, just as people yeah. in general, 
sometimes the price of attention isn't what we think is being paid. It's actually what gets paid on the back end that we didn't realize the price of that attention. So when it comes to when it comes to attention, when it comes to what we want and what we need, and when it comes to boundaries, it's not always what I deserve. Sometimes it's what do I need in this moment to be able to have like a breath of fresh air? Uh-huh. You get what I'm saying? Because like social media, all, all the point of views that we see, they're only coming from a place of hurt. And that's the only place that they're being heard. That's why they type it out so fast. <laughs> that's why it goes viral. That's why people are so um, quick to comment. Uh-huh. But there are people who truly believe that and they don't want to hurt people. They really think this is the only way the world is. And I've been hurt by so many men or I've been hurt by so many women. Uh-huh. Why would I ever make the mistake of thinking otherwise? Uh-huh. And like, that's what we have to keep in mind when it comes to the work that we do, the conversations that we're going to have, the conversations that we may need to have for ourselves. Man, you know, a lot of what we do and the reason that I'm so pro on we need to record the stuff correctly when we do the group stuff is to look back and see what kind of discussions that we have or what are people in the room saying. And anytime we come to the next one, I usually think to myself, are we answering that question while we're there? Or are we taking the month to slowly answer the questions that were asked and packaging it correctly for the folks that are attending our stuff so they can learn better? Yeah. Cause each one is going to teach one and it's not just pain. Also when it comes to vulnerability, the reason we need to be vulnerable isn't just cause of pain. Sometimes you need to be vulnerable to make space for the future you that's going to come here eventually. You know, it's interesting. It's not just pain. It's, I love you saying that. Um, sometimes <clears throat> I've been in places in my life where I didn't want to share my successes. Yeah. Like, there's some good things going on, but I don't know if I should share this. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I feel like going to be celebrated I mean, correctly. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Am I really going to be appreciated for the work and the mm-hmm. sacrifice that I've done so far? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, if I'm not, am I going to be able to handle? the people that I thought loved me correctly and have seen me do so much, not meet me where I am and really take in the fullness of what I've had to give so far. hundred percent. And that's, I go through that every day. Damn. <laughs> well, that being said, um, yeah. I think as we have already said, this is mm-hmm. something that the community has received well. Yeah. Um, it's something that has, it's been it meant a lot to my heart. Yeah. Um, again, this came from a place of need. I don't really have too many brothers I can speak to when I'm going through dark shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of my platonic relationships are women, and it's just so much. It's feel like there's so much I can say in those conversations. Um, and a part of my maintenance tools, the yoga, the eating healthy, the breath work, all these things I do as a trainer. Yeah. But that social connection, that genuine social connection, mm-hmm. I've been lacking that personally. Yeah. Especially with space with other brothers, and so. I hope we can do this again. Mm-hmm. I know we can do this again. We can, we can. And I think um, something that's really important to say to you, it was something you just said um, a second ago. I, I, just, I got it at the tip of my tongue, right? Um, we will do this again, right? And the space is necessary, but I hope you're proud of what you've done so far. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say that is, this is the first series that we've done together of events that we're going to be doing down the road very soon. Dates coming soon. Um, but you had to be an instructor for a certain amount of years and teach a certain amount of classes and been in classes full of women for years to say, all right, why can't that be us? Mm-hmm. And you're not, you're not saying we're not doing those classes anymore with the women or everything else. You're still consistent in that, but but you've desperately said we need to make a space for that. And I see a lot of people who desperately want to make these spaces and demand these spaces and say, why can't that be us? And they have the tools. A lot of them don't make the spaces. We realize it's, it's going to be very time consuming to really sit on that topic and that subject matter and do it correctly. Most people are afraid to start and the other ones who aren't afraid to start, they're afraid to do it correctly. Yeah. Some folks just, are glad to have done it. I'm glad that we've started it, but this isn't finished right now. It's just step one. Hey, eh? I remember what I said, I told to my partner, I was like, Hey, um, after that, that situation we had, I told her, 
I just, when this comes back up again, and it is because life is a full circle moment. And that's okay. That's how it's supposed to be. Just show me proof that you're trying. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I also presented that to a lot of the folks that were in the room with us. Just show me proof that you're trying. I'll give you the tools. We'll have the convo. We'll do the sit downs. I will make space for you within my life, which is very busy. <laughs> Likewise. But, but just show me proof. Because if you show me proof that you're willing to try or you're willing to make mistakes or you're willing to grow or you're willing to succeed, because there are people who are afraid to succeed and I can, I get where they're coming from. Are you putting in the effort? Because remember what I said, no matter how great the tools are that we give you when it comes to coping, when it comes to setting boundaries, when it comes to becoming vulnerable and creating a space to be vulnerable with people, all of this is going to be based off your effort at the end of the day. Yeah. And if you're not giving effort, you're just giving yourself a pat on the back and saying, hey, man, I'm, I'm just glad we're trying. Mm -hmm. And as life grows and you become responsible for things and you learn what love actually is, you love what appreciation, you learn what appreciation actually is, and you learn about the things you want for yourself, you realize, oh, I'm going to need a little bit more. It requires labor. Yeah. And and changing that uh, relationship with the word called work. Healing happens in a womb. It does. It labor. does. It does. And it's a verb. Yeah. Healing it's is a verb. A, healing is a verb. So appreciate you. Thanks for pulling up. Definitely looking forward to what we do. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the recap from uh, Total Truth Thursday. And uh, you'll see us later. Peace. Namaste. Hello, fam. Like, subscribe, share. Peace, always. <laughs> Ooh, that's solid, dog. Uh, I think we need to have a separate conversation. This is kind of a, a